resume. Here we go. Okay. You might get two feeds here, so let's cut back and forth if you do. That means I'm streaming in two different places, possibly. I don't even know if you can do that. Really? Is that possible? I'm learning a lot this morning. Okay, so Karen says I'm back on, so let's try it one more time. I'm going to go down with this one here and populate to my uh, other shot, which is going to be nowhere. Here it is right here. That camera's not on. Now, neither camera's on, so hold on one second. It didn't fire back up. All right, so now I'm going to cross over here, turn this camera back on. Oh, man, it's a good thing I went to school and wait, I didn't go to school. <laughs> Oh, okay. Let's try this. And then I'll hook this camera up. Here we go. Boom. Finish this. Uh, hey, almost. It's back on on my end. Okay. All right. So let's try this camera here. We want to delete that one. Delete. Um, hey, it happens. You know what? Here's what happens when uh, kind of stuff pops up in life, right? All right, let's see there. There could be a shot there coming down on my desk. Let me focus that shot right there and hide that. Turn the camera around. We don't want to do that. You got a nice shot of my ceiling, I bet, right? Okay. Let's see. Where does that swoop around? View. Come into here. Boom. Focus. Hide. Okay. Ha! Let's see. Hello, Rue. Sorry we're having flooding. Ooh. Okay, let's see if this camera works. There we go. All right, so thumbs up. Get it, sort of. Got it, sort of. Um, somebody just give me a thumbs up uh, if it's working. Uh, hit a couple of those little thumbs up if you can. It looks like there's people populating now. And um, good afternoon from Munich. So glad it works now. Okay, changed your appointment in order to see you live. <laughs> Hey, wow. Thank you very much. Okay, so it's back up and running. Hey, I did a full re This is my third restart, so came up here early this morning. So, um, hey, I'm not crying in my tea, okay? It just happens. Perfect. Thank you all for being on board this morning. Finally got it solved, and we're only a few minutes late. Only night. And I, I'll paint a little later this morning if you don't have anywhere to go. Stick with me. So, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, I'm Michael. The grandkids call me Rue, and sometimes Rue scrambles. That's a scramble right there. Um, here's what happens when you scramble. Sometimes this happens when you're painting. Have you ever noticed that sometimes you just you use the wrong color? I've done it lots of times. I'll be painting and talking and telling a story, and I'll reach over to get the yellow, and I'll put my brush in the red, and I'll paint the beak of the rooster red, and I'll go, what, what, what was I thinking? It's obviously I wasn't thinking. So, um, all right, so it's back up and running. I think the audio is back up and running, and um, who knows what happened. So good morning to you all. I'm going to just skip on the good mornings and say hello and welcome, except for from the beautimous cornfields of Iowa, and uh, I'll just drop down about every 10. Good morning, Mitzi. Good morning, Patricia. Good morning, Glenda. Good morning, Kirk. Uh, Kirk, I don't know where you're from. I can't see that little, it looks like Chicago in the background. I can't tell what that is. Sorry, it's a tiny little icon. Um, so, um, been frozen a little bit this morning. Uh, let it go, let it go. Chris, hello to you, Julie, Carol Todd. Um, John Robert Small, welcome to you. Joe Nail, hello, Chris Young. We're back on, it looks like. Uh, Lisa, thank you. Okay, that, that takes me back to Chris at the bottom and top of the morning from Boston, Valerie. So that's the last quote I have. That's a skip of saying hello, but let me, at least I said hello to you. Sorry, it got all messed up this morning. Let's uh, let's start off by doing something. Uh, uh, answer, no, I'll just, I'll paint something first and then we'll go from there. How's that? How about, how about, uh, uh, do I have any paper up here? How about this right here? Let's start with a piece of, uh, Let's start with a piece of Kilimanjaro. Uh, here it goes right here on my desk. There's the desk this morning. I've got my pens laid out here. I uh, had a little, little, uh, I went looking for pens this morning. Um, I couldn't find this pen, this pen, or this pen, and I couldn't find my small brush, and I couldn't find my uh, little Altoid box. And I'm like, wait, where would you have used that last night? I had it outside. I built a hickory fire in the backyard, and before our friends came over, we had, um, uh, four friends come over last night, dear, dear, dear friends in our lives, and uh, 
who we've known each other for many years and plowed through life together, some ministry together. And so we uh, we had wonderful dinner. They brought some and Carol and I, I threw a couple of T-bones and a ribeye on, on, the, on the hickory and uh, great time. And then I realized, oh, I was sitting out there while the fire was getting going painting. So all my stuff was out in the dew last night. So I had to go get it. Um, here we go. Here's a little uh, picture in picture. It seems to be working here. And uh, let's get to it. Let me paint a little. Uh, let me paint a little picture for you this morning. That what I call sometimes a Rube Goldberg. I still owe Kim Sheets one of these um, that I painted once before, and I just haven't gotten back to it. But uh, I just ripped off a piece of this Kilimanjaro bright white 140 pound paper, and so um, I'm I'm not going to sketch with a pencil. I'm just going to just sketch with a pen. A number five pen tail inner gel, and then. Uh, and I'm thinking I wanted something. Uh, somebody uh, asked me if they would, uh, if I would paint something to go next to their coffee pot. And um, so watch this. I'm just going to take my pocket knife here and I'm just going to trim this off right here. Yeah, people make scissors for this, but um, I kind of just like to just make it the cowboy way a little bit. Like I like mistakes. Okay, so that's crooked, but you don't have to worry about it. It'll get trimmed again. I'm going to stay well within the... Uh, well within the the realm of this. I'll just make a mark there and a mark there somewhere in here. So this painting is going to wind up being about five by, roughly five by seven, five by eight. There's five by seven right there. You see that? All right. So I'm going to go in just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Here it is right here. Um, So let's make this happen. Sip of tea. We're on our way. The process that we do to make coffee is we um, we grind the beans. Uh, Chip Clums Roast brings me some uh, fresh beans. We grind those beans, and and depending on how how we grind them, how thick, how how what's how how coarse, how fine. Um, Carol likes uh, a medium. She likes a bold, bold, bold espresso bean, ground medium, and then just in a in a French press. So she's making like and some people have espresso like this, which is through pressure and fine ground. She just kind of lets it stay in there until it just gets like. Uh, 10W30, uh, good tractor oil. And so that's how she likes it. I'll make mine a little different this morning. So what I thought I'd do is I'll just do a little bit of a, a French bottom here. And let me, I'll just do this in pencil so you can see what I'm doing. Here we go. So a little co- little coffee roux this morning. And it's it's a story that's on the whole page. Let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. And and just to make it happen, I'm going to start right here, I think, with the with the, with the the bottom. And so bottom to me is just a glass uh, science uh dish you know it's a it's a uh colon no it's a uh, what do you call it a canister maybe has a little bit here and it's got um it's got a handle on it that comes over here like this i like this handle handles on bottoms aren't meant to be attractive they're meant to be very um expressive Uh, the bottom is kind of uh it's european for sure a little bit of a pour spout here just uh and not P-O-O-R, but P-O-U-R. But that was a poor one right there that I just drew. That's pretty poor. I normally do not use erasers on the end of pencils because they don't work well. But I find that this eraser, this Ticonderoga, works pretty pretty well. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. So then the interesting thing about a bottom is that it has a, uh, it has a lid on it like so. And it's, it's just a dome lid up here. And then it has a little ball on it. Um, where this little guy is sitting up here. He's in charge. He's running the show. Okay. So there's my bottom. The little piece comes down. This is a, uh, this is a net on the inside. I don't know why I'm sketching this in pencil because you can't see it. So I'm just going to go in here and do it with pen. Say the heck with it. Okay. And this is kind of like, I just blow into watercolor, you know, no rules. Uh, just, just let it happen. If you mess it up, we'll take five minutes and do it over. Okay. And let's get a little music going here this morning. So just a Calm me down a little bit. Like, what was happening with the internet? Are we still up and running? Uh, Shauna Rudoodles is on YouTube sometimes. It's Cylinder. Thank you. Um, so you can, in fact, you hashtag Rudoodles or hashtag Michael Hahn. You should see some of my old shows. Not my classes. They're not on YouTube, but the sh- some of the shows are. I don't put them all on there. Okay? So you can find it that way. Um, I uh, looked for the K paper and didn't see the blue and black pad you're using here. It's uh, 
made from by cheap Joe Miller. It's made cheap Joe's. It's called Kilimanjaro. They do make it in a black boulders. They make it in a green one sometimes. This is called the Bright White Paint Book. Bright White Paint Book. It's 140 pound. It's 100% rag cotton. It's uh, made in England. You should uh, find it over there somewhere. Or those guys will ship it to you. That's crazy how they make it over there. Ship it to us and we'll ship it back to you. Everything for a little bit of a price. It's weird, but that's how it happens. All right, so I just want to paint the Bodum here in the middle. This is called the Bodum because the first company that made fresh presses, the glass cylinder itself was made by a glass company. It's called Bodum, B-O-D-E-M, I think. Um, never trust me on spelling. I uh, spell check everything that I do that has to go out. Everything else, I just make it up as I go and think, ah, you people get it. Y'all are smart. Okay, so... Hey, let me, let me do this, and I'll, I'll uh, talk and answer a couple of questions at the same time. This is a little rod that goes down and holds, um, holds a little screen, and this little screen has tons of holes in it. It's a little disc in here. In fact, this has some little, little wire wrap around the outside edge, and it's got all kinds of holes in it. It's got a little mount right here that comes up. And it's got just tons of holes in it. If you haven't used a Bodum before, this is really one of the best ways I know to make coffee. I think right here, I've got to draw a box on the wall, just like this. And then I think what I'm going to do is put a, a switch in this box. And then maybe I'm going to put a roux here like this. He's looking up at him, but he's standing here with his hand on the switch. And then I'm going to show these wires, too. I think that, that'd be fun to show the wires. Okay, so then over here, I think what I need is uh, I need a coffee cup right here. So I'm, of course, here's here's where I draw my coffee cups. See? I'm going to draw a diner mug. See me holding it up? It has a little bit of curve in it. See that curve? All right. Um, let's see here. And by the way, um, it's B-O-D-U-M. Okay. There. S -S uh, Sabine says it's Bodum. <laughs> Not like Odom. That was a Merle Haggard song. I paid the debt I owed him. Still not satisfied. I'm just, whatever that song was, I don't remember. It's kind of strange to come up here, though, and fire everything up, get it all running just really well, and take a look at it, and then lo and behold, um, it doesn't work. It just quits. It just quits. Okay, so I need another peep right here. And he's he's one of the guys. And so I guess my painting is going to go a little uh, little bigger than five by seven. This paper is actually ten inches long, and so and these are little kind of furry. Um, can you say furry and feather in the same sentence? I think I just did. These are little furry chickens. <laughs> you know, chickens are chickens, right? People send me notes and they they say things like this. Why do you paint roosters? Okay. Hey, hey, why do you paint roosters? Roo, why do you paint roosters? You call yourself Roo. Why do you why do you call yourself Roo? Why do you paint? And, and the answer is really simple. The answer is uh, because my last name is um, is sort of German, a little English, but it's a uh, uh, it'd be a German English. Um, it's um, it means rooster. It means foul. It means proud rooster, my uncle used to say. That's what your name means, boy. It means proud rooster. My uncle Edgar would say that. He was a pig farmer, which I thought was funny. But he always had chickens on the farm anyway. He was, he was a trip. And uh, well, I thought he was just always making that up until um, came out later. He was, he was actually telling me the truth. And so when I started first painting and just trying to figure out what I wanted to do, I didn't want to paint oil painting because, well, I just don't have the patience for oil to dry. And I didn't want to paint acrylic because I just uh, feel like it's uh, it's kind of a craft paint to me. And I know, and, and that's a slam on acrylic painters because people I've seen beautiful art, but there's something about it that it always reminded me. It was it was in craft stores, and I thought my craft was in my shop. I wanted my paint to be watercolor. I like the way it ran. I like the way it looked. I like the way the light hits it, and I like the paper coming through it. All those things I saw before I'd ever painted watercolor. I just thought I love watercolor. And I also thought that in about five minutes, I'd just close the notebook and take off down the road, especially for journals. So that's what pulled me to it, really. 
uh, the fact that I could maybe doodle and sketch just a tiny bit, not really well, still don't sketch well, but I sketch enough to get my point across, um, made me think that I might could do it. And then so when I got into it and I started sketching, some of you know this story from my 159 days with you on the web. So what happened was I got into it and I realized that, man, this is tough. But um, but if you keep plowing ahead, get behind the mule, you can do it. And that's one, that's one of the rules. The, one of the rules is just get behind the mule. And who knows, before long, you'll actually, you'll actually start to, uh, to plow some. And so I saw it start to come together. And Carol one day said, you know, you've painted a shrimp, you painted a crab, you painted some a, a little landscape things, a house and, and a vineyard. And why, why don't you paint roosters? I mean, that's our namesake. I mean, Han, it's, it's rooster. And so that's how I got into roosters. Okay, so 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 now you know why it is. And so my grandkids call me Rue. So when I wrote my book, uh, it was based on a true thing. Hey, Rue, what's a wheelbarrow? And I'm going like, oh, that's my job. My job is Rue is to say, oh, I'll tell you what a wheelbarrow is, but not just tell you that it's it's a tub with a wheel that carries things. And my wife for years thought it was, Carol thought it was a wheelbarrow, you know, like a, a barrel, like a drum. And no, it's barrow like borrow almost like this what happens to it your neighbor borrows it and that's in the book too but uh, so that's the concept of, of that um other people i got notes this week that said why do you pay it at 857 and i said well obviously this morning i didn't do too well right <laughs> um uh, yes, and the shows are on YouTube. Some of them, some of the shows that I do are on YouTube. Just hashtag Roo Doodles, uh, Roo, uh, Roo Doodles, uh, Roosters, hashtag Roosters, hash, hashtag Michael Hahn. You could probably find it that way. Um, I'll look around and see. So uh, 857, I painted 857 because it's a little before nine. That little bit, that little bit is important because watercolor uh, you just have to do a little bit at a time, okay? Um, eight, five, seven, also, I think, Pat, some other folks covered for me this week when someone asked this question, and they said, oh, it's real simple. Um, Rue says if you add up eight, five, and seven, you get 20, and I'm going to tell you, if you want to be a good watercolor artist, doodle 20 minutes a day, paint 20 minutes a day. Just sit down and grab your paint and do something and even if you're just making tomatoes, even if you're just painting water balloons or, 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 or uh, helium balloons for the kids, even if you're just doing little, uh, if you're doing a grasshopper, okay, and you want to do a series of grasshoppers, uh, even whatever your, whatever, a cat, a dog, whatever your go-to is, roosters are my go-to sketch. Roosters, when I sit down, are the thing that I sketch on the tablecloth. When I go to the restaurant that still has paper on the tablecloth, that's the thing that I do right there. And then I'll paint it. I'll make a comment about the food. Maybe he's got a chicken leg here, and uh, which wouldn't be good. Maybe he should have a T-bone. <laughs> but you see what I'm headed. And then I'll sign it, and I'll paint it if I have my paints with me. And I'll leave it for our waiter, waitress, uh, the wait staff. Okay, whatever you call those people nowadays. All right, so here's what I'm doing here. Now, this this is where it gets a little tricky right here. So I'm going to do a little bit of a rube here. Watch this. I'm going to do... It's good to do little pieces of wire. This is a hinge. See, you can see it's a hinge. And then right here, I'm just going to do a little ring coming out here like this. Maybe that's wired on to this other side. This is the handle. Um... And, and then what I'm going to do in a second, I'll show you when I finish all that. First, I think I'm going to put uh, put an arrow right here because people want to know, when people come to your house, they want to know where the coffee is, you know, and the coffee pot and all that. So I'm just going to go down with this arrow. And I think this arrow is going to have light bulbs in it, like a little light bulb like this. Okay, so and then maybe it's... it's a, doubled arrow and it's it's hanging from up top like this um maybe there's a little shelf right here it's just a little platform that's holding on and this has a tiny little hourglass sitting on it like this which is a timer it's important that when you put the the grounds inside the beaker 
okay, the cylinder, the bottom, and then you pour the hot water in at about 195 to 202, somewhere in there. Get it to boil and just let it sit for a second and then pour it in. You don't want to scald it in there. You don't want the 212 boiling water to go in. And, and then basically you set a little timer and you let it um, for three, three, three and a half, four minutes. Sometimes if you're Carol, four minutes because she wants that to coagulate. She wants all the oils in the coffee and the boldness in the coffee to come through in that water. And then there's a little plunger on top. You leave the lid off for a little bit, let the steam go out, condensation. And then you start to push that plunger down. And so you push the plunger down and it takes all the grounds down to the bottom. They all go down to the bottom, and then you just tip this beaker over and you pour it out. So here's here's what we're going to go with this. I'm going to paint it just for fun here, okay? So let me see if I can do that this morning. Um, hey, so 8.57 is uh, what time I start the shows. People say, how much your classes cost? 8.57. $8.57 a class. That That's $34.28 a month for those people who take the class. Um, Christmas Rue 8.57 is still open to register uh, a lot of you have signed up for that. That's going to be fun. I'm going to paint my whimsical characters uh, for about Christmas, Christmas trees, Christmas presents, Christmas bulbs, Christmas decorations. Uh, then I'm going to get into the Christmas story, and I'm going to spend uh, a couple times just painting uh, the truth of Christmas through my characters, uh, whimsical and yet uh, just truthful. So that'll be that'll be fun to do too. All right, so I'm just going to grab uh, my bamboo brush here. This is a number one bamboo brush. This is a number. Three, I believe. Yes, it is. Uh, Cheap Joe's interlocking nylon brush here. Um, what I've used so far is a number five Pentel pen. And I always keep one of these on hand or so, one of my fountain pens. I've, I've got this one and I've, I've really grown accustomed to it. I love this one too. They're both Kakuno pens. This one is a medium nib. Excuse me. This one's a fine nib. And this one is a, an extra fine nib. And uh, they both have pilot ink in them which might even come in a box like this um, black cartridge ink but it'll say uh, some of them say, say pilot on them like here there it is pilot right there okay I try to put the right ink in my right pens except for my big fountain pen uh, wherever it is up here and I use that fountain pen with speedball ink in it for a real bleed serious bleed okay all right here we go so let me paint this just to get what happens. I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna start with the with uh, the middle of it and work my way to the outsides. I always love to have a little Terry Tardy turquoise in here. This is Andrew's turquoise, but I call it Terry Tardy turquoise. Uh, Terry's been painting with me since I started back in the end of March. So so there it is here, and uh, also the handle is gonna match the cylinder dome. So that's gonna be where I'm gonna use the turquoise there. Look. Um, I just drug it in like I was color coloring it here. And I just went in with a wet brush. Uh, these, I'm gonna paint these a little silver gray here. Just sweep this across like so, okay? I could take that all the way out, but there's something about setting the handle apart a little bit. This would be a little silver gray, but also have a little coffee brown in it. Now I gotta come up with a coffee color. So probably gonna start with something like that. Start with a little Payne's gray. Start with a little um, gray. Start with a little sienna, and then just start to get my coffee to look the way I want it to look, okay? So I'm just kind of dancing it around there, and I'm going to come in just a little bit so you can see just a little more what I'm doing here. Move these over. All right, I think you can see that right there. So here's where I'm just playing, and guess what? I'm leaving a little bit of, uh, I'm leaving some holidays in there. See the little white spaces? I'm leaving that. I'm just letting the light show through just a little bit. I just don't want one big glob. So, why do people call me Rue? For all you new folks that have popped on the show, and thank you for popping on so much. It's really great. Um, and um, and Sheila, don't don't rush to finish your paintings. I'm not on Pinterest, Annette. Thank you for the question. Pinterest to me is like uh, offering you ten bucks but never giving it to you. That's what bothers me about Pinterest. It's like people go and they grab something. And they pin it to the wall, but they don't tell you really where they saw it, who did it, where it came from, what it cost, and the links are usually not there. And so it kind of frustrates me. So I go, oh, yeah, I found this picture. And I'll spend about two months finding the picture. I just go, nah. So I haven't become a Pinterest fan because of that. Um, it's like, oh, so I would rather you just say, oh, go to Rue Doodles. He'll tell you how to do it. Remember, I withhold nothing. Anything that I learn how to do, I'll tell you how to do. 
So people ask me about 857. That's the time I start. It means a lot of things. It means 20 minutes. It's also the price of my, sh- my classes. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do after December, but coming back in January, I- I'm going to do something because I'm having a blast. You all are helping me have community here, and I hope I'm helping you feel confident to just become who you're supposed to become as a watercolor artist. One of the things I'll start with every show, and I'll start it again when we start this uh, Christmas Rue 857. How do you think like an artist? What makes you think differently than somebody else? Will I ever paint a landscape or a park or a fountain like uh, John's, uh, 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 like Sergeant? No, 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 no. I never, I never will. Okay, I, I just will never do that. Okay, uh, John Singer, Sergeant stuff, or even his portraits. No, I'll never do that. In fact, I'll never do a portrait. But because I just don't have that skill. But what I will do is I'll come up with my style and and I won't excuse myself around it. I'll just say, this is who I am and this is what I do. Chip and I were talking about last night uh, about some friends who have uh, been encouraging him uh, with watercolor and saying, look, it's the toughest medium you're going to tackle. So here's what happens that I also want you to know. People send me notes all the time and they say, um, they say this, they say, Watercolor it scares me to death. And so I say to them, obviously, you haven't been walking down a trail in the Appalachian Mountains with a bacon sandwich in your backpack and hear this oh, behind you and realize that black bear wants my sandwich. That might scare me to death, but watercolor shouldn't. Okay, watercolor should honestly just really um, have the ability to relax you and turn you into a journaling person first. Because people, uh, you get in a hurry, you get in a rush, you think you're supposed to turn out a piece of art that looks like something you saw on Pinterest. And and uh, and I'm not picking on you, uh, Annette, for Pinterest, but that's why I'm not on there. It always it just doesn't give me all the facts. So. Um, if you are on there, change it, do something better. Okay. Uh, tell people where it came from. Maybe they don't give you that format cause I've never tried to be on it, but people sometimes will bring me a picture or something from Pinterest and say, Hey, could you find this? And I go, no, you found it. Where is it? And so anyway, I'm not trying to be uppity. I'm just saying that that's why I haven't done it. It has been fun. Okay. So there's the red arrow, uh, that's kind of coming down and I'll put a board behind that in a minute. There's the coffee pot. Got to put some Got to put a little bit of paint in these roofs. I'm going to paint them two different ways so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm just going to touch this one with a little water up here like that. I'm going to touch this one with a yellow paint first and no water. Maybe if my yellow paint had loosened up a little bit, now I'm getting it where I want it. And so then I'm going to touch this one with half and half this one. I'm just going to drop a little bit of the paint in there, the water, because I wanted this one to be a little darker, and I wanted that pen to bleed a little bit with the water. Okay? And now this guy here, I'm just going to grab some really bold, and I'm going to bring down some just from his head like this, and I'm going to go dip a little bit of orange in there, too. I want him to have a little bit of orange, and I want him to have a little bit of black right in here, too. Look at that. So they're all a little different. He looks like a piece of candy corn a little bit to me, which is... Uh, if you want to know how to draw candy corn, that's it right there. You can just put faces on it. Make little chickens out of candy corn. Um, okay, so. All right, so now i got to come down here with this color and pull the bottom of this in a little bit like so. All right, then you see it here. And this glass has a little bit of blue in it just because you can see the light catching in the kitchen. That's just the way it is. It's a glass beaker. I'm going to touch that with my finger and use my finger as an eraser. I guess I could use a paper towel, huh? It'd be the easy way, but it wouldn't have been the cowboy way. All right, so there's the beaker. Uh, there's my little painting coming together. This is a little uh, shelf up on the wall here. Look, I'm still painting with a big brush, and I'm just being kind of very careful. Got a little bit of salt coming down here from this this thing and what I might do here is just kind of come in with a pen beef this up a little bit um, rush this but I'm just showing you how to put this together grab a little bit of uh, my number three come in and grab um, a little bit of a sienna color I like the beaks of my chickens and their legs to just be a little bit of an opposing color 
just so it sets them apart a little bit. This box on the wall should be ivory. There it is right there. That's way too much paint. Start with a little bit of paint, drag it in. Here's an ivory switch coming in, maybe a little gray on the side of this. Okay, um, maybe some shadow underneath. I'm gonna grab a pen here and just cause some shadow to wash in like this under here. So sometimes when I sit down to paint, lots of times when I sit down to paint, I have this little idea of a story, um, a place that wanted to be framed by a coffee pot so people would kind of see what's coming on. And so you're going like, well, I don't get it. What's the, what's the point here? And um, so here is, here's the get it part right here. Ready? All right, watch. This is like driving by a Krispy Kreme and seeing the sign that says hot now. So there you go. So it's going to be like this. So this guy right here has a little string or a chain. Remember those little chains that were just like little chains that we used to turn the lights on with? They were little beads, you know, silver beads that were all tangled together. That's kind of how I saw this. I started to draw a string, but I don't want it to. So he's going to tie this onto here like this. All right, this is a hinge. Remember I told you this is a hinge. So I want a little steel gray here, maybe just a little Payne's gray black. Paint this hinge down here like this. Might put a little screw in this right here. So you got a little screw head and it's tied onto the pot here like this or to the canister the cylinder i'm told it's called this morning okay um uh okay now i'm going to go in from here with the wire i'm going to take the wire up here through the ceiling i'm going to bring the wire in back to here Twisted wire, so you know it's an electrical wire, like so. Put the screws back in. Okay, so see what I got there? All right, so I have this little, I have this little painting that's coffee now, and so you understand the thing. He's in charge. Uh, nothing happens until this roux says, and here's what happens. When Carol pours this up, nothing happens until the little timer goes off. Nothing. We just wait. And then when that little timer goes off, push the plunger down and then say, now. And it turns on the light and says, it's coffee time. Good paintbrush right here, isn't it? That's one of the best ones right there. Hard to get a brush better than that. Kids been using them for years. <laughs> I love it. All right. So, um, I could come back in and make sure I got eye details a little bit here with a bigger pen. Right here, I like to come back in, maybe put some loose feathers in there. A little feather here like this, a little detail on the mug, maybe some uh, cross hatching like this, maybe a little black feet here. Maybe a little bit of cross hatching here. And so there it is right there. There's a little, uh, a, a tiny little room, you know, electrical light, uh, three, three, three peeps making coffee. And there it is. There's your French press in the morning. Coffee now. It's like what happens to my truck when I drive by Krispy Kreme and it says hot now. <clears throat> Pull in. <sighs> I'll take one of those. Uh, you know, one time I was working for Fox News and uh, I had to do a television piece early in the morning. Um, came on. We went live at like uh, 6 a.m. And so uh, the guy who did our outside stuff, I was doing traffic for him, had my guitar there goofing off. And they sent me out with Billy, Billy the cameraman on Fox. And they said, hey, we want you to go do a couple live interviews this morning. We're going to be at the Krispy Kreme down on uh, 
74 is out on the eastern part of Charlotte. So I run down to the Krispy Kreme. We pull in, you know. So there's nobody in there yet. So we get a camera. We set up a light and uh, wire a microphone on me. Got a microphone to hold for the person. And uh, and so uh, I said, uh, we're going to do what everybody does when they're in a donut shop. They're going to ask this question. How did they get the filling into those cream filled donuts? And how much filling will a donut hold? And the person looks at me like, Nobody asked that. And I said, oh, sure, everybody wants to know that at home. Everybody wants to know how do they get the filling inside the donut and how much does the donut hold? And so so that's what I did. I, uh, I, uh, She said, oh, you'd use this machine. So I got the donut, put on my gloves, you know, and got the donut. I put it on this little plunger, you know, this little thing sticks out from the wall like this. I put the donut on there. I pull this lever and it pumps the filling in like... 1,001, and I'm going like, no, 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 no. That's not that's not enough feeling. So that's what's happening to me. I come in and somebody's just going, no, oh, I want one that goes, Doom. I want that donut. So then, I, then of course, we, we do that. Hey, when we come back, teaser on TV. When we come back, we're going to find out how much cream one of these donuts will hold. <laughs> And so, so now I've set it on live TV and the person's going like, oh no, you didn't do that. So I'm going like, yeah, Drew, cover up what you need. And so, you know, I'm going like, pull the, pull the donut on there and go, ah, uh, you know, being a kid at heart is so good. Sometimes it just uh, refreshes everything. So I hope uh, you're refreshed. All right. Hey, um, um, <laughs> oh, sorry about the sound effects. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I did traffic on TV at like six in the morning. And think about this, right? Here's Michael Hahn with your traffic. Hey, good morning. I own 74 this morning. There's a, and I'm going like, eh, so I'm showing maps behind me, but I'm thinking, what? So this thought occurs to me on television. I'm thinking, is this crazy? The people at home are watching traffic. They're having coffee. They're watching traffic on TV. Do they care about traffic? No. They haven't even left yet. In fact, some of them are still standing there going like, oh, I gotta go shower. I don't want, oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, and I, something would always fall out of a truck. And so I would always say, there's a dishwasher in the road. And one day there was, because um, I would always say, it's a dishwasher. Something's on the highway on I-485. Go, it's a dishwasher. And then one day we had a shot. It was a dishwasher. Um, and it, it was just kind of funny. I've been saying it for like six months. So the the point is, is that I took my guitar in. So I'd get little news pits of stories and I'd grab my guitar and I'd go, hey, you watch the weather maps. I'm just going to play. So I just rock back and go. Hey, drive safely. And then that was when I used to say, what if, what if you what if you allowed someone to just merge in in front of you? What if you did? What if you, you know how people start to pull out and, and you you see them coming to the intersection and you don't even want to have eye contact with them because you know if you have eye contact, you're going to have to let them in. You go, I'm not letting you in. No. So you just look over like this. Oh, I didn't see you there. I didn't see your car right there. So what if you just let someone merge in? What if you did? Do you know what would happen if you did that? You would get to work. 17 feet, 20 feet at the most behind them. That's as long as your car is, just that much. But over that 20 feet, it's like, nah, guy, I'm on, you should have left earlier. I'm on this road here. <laughs> so I would do stuff like that on TV. It was kind of fun. All right. Hey, um, this is a fun little painting to do. Um, since I'm not created, since I'm created, I might try to create, but I'm not sure I'm an artist. Um, I'm enjoying my work and I like my style, but I would never share it. Okay. And that's fine. You know what? Um, I didn't share my work for probably three or four years. Just didn't. I painted for me and it's perfectly good. Uh, some people feel comfortable, right? Uh, jumping up at the dinner table at Thanksgiving and singing, uh, uh, the national anthem. Some people uh, need to learn the words before they sing the national anthem. I think we should sing it. I think we should stand for it. There's nothing worse than writing a song that no one will stand for. Okay? That'll, that'll sink in in a minute. As a songwriter, you want people to recognize your song. But my point is, is that don't worry about not sharing your art yet. Paint for you if you love the medium. But don't fear watercolor, as that was back on my point a minute ago. Don't fear watercolor. And here's why. I'm going to grab another little piece of watercolor paper. 
I'm going to stay with this this morning. Kilimanjaro, there it is right there. Here it is. Okay, man, this, this time is flying here. And I was going to paint a bird this morning. But let me, let me show you one more time what can happen if, if, you, if you don't fear watercolor. I do this from time to time. I love to do it when uh, folks, I don't get tired of seeing this. But seriously, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take some, uh, I'm just going to take a little bit of uh, water, throw it on the page like so. Then I'm going to take a little bit of blue and just throw it on the page like so. And not a whole lot today. Just keep this light. Start with some water and then add a little color. Okay. Let's add a little bit of red. Let's add a little bit of red here. A little bit of red there. Add a little bit of yellow here. You see the rooster already because you've been with me long enough to know that this is coming. But that'll give you an idea of what I do. Maybe grab a little bit of this and just sort of splatter it around a little bit. Get a little messy with it. How about a little bit of green? Don't normally start with some green in there. There it goes right there. Might get some ugly brown in there, but we'll see what happens. Mallory, Neil Mallory, thinking about you, buddy, if you're watching this morning. Neil's going through some chemo right now. He's been on our show a lot, so pray for you, man. All right, so there we go. So there's our rooster. You already see the rooster, don't you? In fact, do you know what? I could draw a leg here and talk about a rooster that says, I'm coming apart. I love doing this. This is the play that makes me laugh at watercolor. It also is the play that I use simply when people say they're afraid of watercolor. And I'm going, so far, you haven't seen me shaking them boots here, okay? I'm not afraid of what's going on right here. Look what's happening. Look at that little bit of brown that, that happened there. Look at the little bit of orange that came loose here. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to change it on you now. I'm going to throw something else in there. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a pin. Here we go. I'm going to add a number five pin. And I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to go ahead and draw a leg right here. And some toes, just to get the detail I'm after. And then I think this rooster looks like he's sneaking up on a fence post to argue. It's one of my paintings I like to do, so I'm going to draw his other foot up like that. And then I'm going to pick up on this red and I'm going to take it in and let that be the first waddle right there. And then I'm going to go in here with his beak. And then I'm going to draw his comb right up here like this, curve it back and do it like that. Wow. I just painted a rooster in four and a half minutes. Okay. Wait, I'm not even done yet, but I will be. Water first. Okay. If you want that water to be controlled, I'm going to take a little number three brush. Nylon, this is a cheap Joe's brush that I like. I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to put a little bit of water inside his comb, okay? I don't think you can see that. Maybe you can if I tilt it up. Look at this real carefully. Let's see, get on the tilt. There it is right there. See the shine in that? That's liquid. That's water, okay? So I'm going to drop a little bit of color in here. This is what you do to experiment. This is what you do to play. I'm going to add a little bit more right here, and then I'm just going to go dip my brush in some wet Red, this is Hot Mama Red, or um, Red Hot Mama, or, or uh, wait a minute, it's Red Hot, or Red Hot Mama, or Joe's Red, or Hot Red Hot Mama, that's what it is. I'll get it down. It's been a while since I've called out all these colors. I'm trying to get my act together here. Okay. And then I want a little more yellow, and I want to come in here, and I want to grab some yellow, and just let it mingle in like this, but I'm also going to grab some yellow, and just on a dry piece of paper, come in right there and put his beak in. And then I just want to loosen this up a little bit. Now, there's some orange that's coming in right here. You see it? You see the orange that's developing right there? I'm just going to roll my brush in that orange, and I'm going to take it down here and bring it into the legs like this. So I didn't mix this paint anywhere else. I mixed this paint on the paper. I love it when this happens. Uh, what I might do now is go in here and just get a little spot for an eye. The eye doesn't have to be overworked. If you don't have enough room in the pupil to leave a little white like there has to be life in the eye then just put a spot and then let the outside be the white does that make sense see i just went like that if i see if you were looking at this close enough and i don't think you can see it from where you are Ooh, i think you're gonna get there there's a little bitty spot and it looks like it's right on and i just touched it with the pen and put a little bit of an eyelash over it do roosters have eyelashes mine do sometimes okay 
I'm going to grab a number seven. Here it is right here. This is seven pintail intergel. And I'm just going to make some cross hatches and a little, uh, I call that the thumb. That's the last toe, um, but it reminds me of the thumb as it goes back. So I have my own names for things. This is the bottom end of the rooster, right? And so now what I might do is I might come in with some, some lines in here and just do a little bit of detail to this, but I don't want too much detail. I want this rooster to be loosey-goosey, okay? Um, which is really something silly if you'd say it's not a goose. It's a... All right. Now, I see something I want to change, so I'm going to get a little piece of paper towel here, and I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to grab this bill and push down and pull it off. There was some of that, too much red running in the bill for me, so I, while it was still wet, I'm going to erase it, Now I'm going to go in with some bolder yellow. There it is right there. Okay, and notice what else I did. Let me, let me, uh-oh, sorry. There it is right here. Look what else I did. I, I, I left a little bit of white space here. I left white space there. Look at this. I could fill that in, but that's what you got to resist the temptation to do. Don't color it all like you're in Miss Wilson's third grade class and she's giving you one crayon and you got to use up the whole crayon. No. Simple, small, clean, clear. That's how you do not fear watercolor. Just let it go. Okay? This, this does need a little bit of turquoise right here. There it is right there. Why? Because... I love what that does to the eye. It just causes the eye to pull in. I love what's happened right here to this pen too. See, I just took my seven, this one right here, and I, I just sort of ran it out of a little spot right there and I let it just sit for a second. What happens is that looks like a hot spot in the feathers that you see sometimes in roosters. Did I plan that? No, I did not. I stumbled into this rooster by splattering some paint and blowing. If this were a dog's face, I could do the same thing. I'd have the outline of the dog and I'd just splatter some on there. One of my favorite paintings, by the way, let me show you. One of my favorite paintings, if I have it right here. This is Fluid 100 paper. See it? Fluid 100 cold press. Look right here. 100% cotton. Um, this painting, I believe it's by Charles uh, Reed. Yep. I just wanted to make sure I had his name right. R-E-I-D. Look at this painting. Look. Boom. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Would you have ever thought about putting this blue back here to run into this little bit of red and make almost a purple? Would you have thought about the same color right here in the eyes? Look at this painting. He just sketched this on a piece of 300 pound paper. And, and look right here. Look at that. Some of you would go, well, I'd put some spills on there. I don't wanna, I don't wanna send that out. Are you kidding me? This company loved this painting so much from Charles Reed. Uh, when he wrote his books, they actually said, we want to use that as our logo shot. Look at that. I have not found an watercolor artist yet that wouldn't want to paint like that. I love this face. There's so much energy in this. Look, the nose is, there's a pencil line out here, but there's just a water line down through here. Look at this painting. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So for me, this, this is that same sort of look that I kind of love to do in my roosters, okay? So I just love it when it works like that and it sort of comes together. And I can come in with a little bit of black and put it right there. I can splatter a little right down here on the bottom end of this room. And even behind there. And that's a little too uniform, so I'm just going to let it fly out a little bit. Don't fear watercolor. Rue 857 is a little before nine. And I'm Rue. Now, there's a little place I want to change because I caused that water to run a little bit. I'm going to grab it right there. And I just took a paper towel and I raced some on his head. Some weeks I'll sit and I'll just paint loose roosters like this because I love them so much. And they communicate the farm, they communicate uh, the style, they communicate a lot of things that I really like instead of trying to, and, and I'm not looking at any roosters right now, of course, well, I saw this one laying over there, but he's different, he's a little more locked in, I've got the book up here because my books are in and I'm signing books, you can get the book at roodoodles.com, it's called Hey Roo, What's a Wheelbarrow, you can also sign up for 
uh, Rue uh, Christmas, Christmas Rue 857. The registration is still open. Look, listen to me. If you go and you register, uh, RueDoodles.com, Rue 857, if you register, you buy the class, uh, it's about three hamburgers worth. <laughs> That's about what it costs for the four classes. Uh, two in November, 17, 19, and then two in December, 1st and 3rd. If you buy those classes, uh, you will be directed via the email. You'll get a list of materials. If you don't want to buy those materials, don't buy them. You don't need them. Use what you have. You can paint Christmas colors in your own colors. Uh, if you have to add some things or if you want to add some things, do it. But don't go into the expense of adding everything to think you're going to you're gonna be changed by 20 minutes a day for the next whatever. Okay. Uh, so here's the thing. If you buy that class, it'll direct you to a page and that page is a private link. And then I'll have your registration and I'll have you on that private link where you've asked for an admission. And about two days before the class, I will open that page and let you in. I'm trying to get some things ready for that page right now. I'm trying to do about five things at once. So I apologize for, um, I don't know what the hiccup was this morning, but, uh, but I, I love the fact that you held on and you've uh, st t stayed in here. I'm going to do one more thing because I was a little late coming on this morning. So if you want to stay with me for another minute or two, you can. I'm going to I'm going to reiterate the bird story, and I got one more bird to paint this morning. And uh, so there it is, right there. Um, I signed that. I don't have the caption yet, but I love this. I love this rooster. Okay. I like him. I like him very much. All right. So there we go. Now, one more bird to paint, and then I'm out of here. I'm going to lay this over here and just let it dry. So I painted a little coffee rube here this morning. Turn on the light when it's ready. Coffee now. There it is right there. And um, and then this loose rube by just not fearing watercolor. Just let the colors go. Um, and, and what you might have to do is you might have to lose control over it. Uh, most of the time, if you're an acrylic artist. Now, if you're a fine painter, fine art painter, you've got to have control. I get that. I get that. It's a style. You have to develop your own style. You have to have your own voice. You have to be who you were meant to be. That's what the world needs to see. Okay? I didn't mean to make that rhyme. It just happened like that. Okay, so here's my bird right here. Let me get a little birdie out here. There he is. This one is the last one I haven't painted yet. Um, so, he's got a little little uh, stem in the bottom of him right there and that's to stick in the plant so he sits up outside i think this bird probably should be kind of a blue bird now you know the story on the birds right there's there's uh, four there's three already who have homes there's a uh, julie walden there's a uh, christine and there's Susie, and they already know and they've sent me emails they're going to be getting a bird a little painted bird they're going to be getting a little bird original from me that's painted on a three by three like this I'm going to draw a name out and you get to keep the little birdie for one month. And then you get to draw a name from everybody. And, um, and then, <laughs> then you, you have to ship him to somebody else. If you want to, if you want to keep him, then we'll all know who you are. <laughs> that was the guilty push wasn't it. And so then, then what happens is, uh, you can keep the original piece of art, but here's what you have to do. You have to add your own original birdie on a piece of paper like this to send it to him. You got that? See it right there? There it is. Okay. You got to just come up with a little bird. So here's the thing. You're going to say, oh, but I don't know how to draw a bird. Well, just learn to draw one. Start start just doodling and just do a little birdie. Okay. Look how simple that is. Right there. There's a little birdie right there. If I, that showed up from you in, um, if that came from Annette in Bird Island, uh, Minnesota, I would say oh, that's from Annette. And I'd put it on my board, whereas I put all my little paintings that you guys uh, sent to me from time to time. All right. Here we go. A little blue bird. Let's see. We're going to a little bit of this blue in here. I'm going to get a bigger brush. Get this thing done in a flash. Watch this. I'm going to add a little water to the bird. This is just concrete. Dirty concrete, by the way. I'm not cleaning it. I'm not washing it off. I want him to have a little bit of blue in there. Whoa, that's some serious blue. I painted the others almost like a little wrens and, and uh, uh, yeah, not, not uh, chickadees, but wrens probably. And then, uh, don't you love that already? He's a little blue bird. Love what's happening in the detail where the water is causing this paint to run down into the feathers. A little bluer up on the head. This is ultramarine blue. Uh, bluebirds might have a little bit more cerulean in them, but I like ultramarine, so that's what I'm going to do. Right now, the paint's running off onto my fingers. That'll look good. Matches my watch, huh? Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Nice.
All right, so now we need a little bit of yellow. Uh-oh, messed up right there. Can you see what I did? I touched the wrong end of that brush. It had a little yellow on the high part of the brush. Here we go. Clean this out really well. Always clean your brushes out really well before you... I always tell you that right after I do it, right? Wrong thing. Always clean your brushes out really well before you put them back into your palette. If you don't, here's what's going to happen. Your palette's going to turn into a mud pie. Okay, it's just going to look like a pond that... Uh, um, is it's got some bad algae floating in it. So clean up your brushes before you stick them in there. Even when you're doing stuff like this, I'm going to get the glue on it. I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab a little more orange right here. Bluebirds have a crusty little yellow, orange, red belly underneath there. Like so. He's getting there. Don't want him to turn green yet, so I'm going to let this blue dry a little bit. And I'm not trying to make him perfect. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little brush and... Uh, Grab the black here, right here, and just touch his eye in one spot. Boom. Oh, love it. Touch this one over here, right there. Boom. Love it. And then maybe just make his beak a little black also. Look at this. I'm using nature's best brush again. I'm doing my finger. Watercolor is not toxic. You can dip your brush in your tea if you in your coffee. If you haven't done that yet, you will. So just drink it anyway and go, it's the baptism of the artist, okay? You'll go, you'll just be tooling around like this and you'll go, oh yeah, I'm having a fun time today, I'm painting. You'll go, oh no, I just dipped it in there and you go like, ah. It's black tea. <laughs> okay? All right. Oh, look at this, this is cool. I might become a concrete painter. Now, this bird's going to come to somebody, and I'm going to draw a name right now. Here we go. I just painted a fairy ran. I love that, Chris Young. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to scroll through my names. I'm looking at you. I'm scrolling back and forth on everybody that's come on the show this morning. From the beginning, there's the top right there. I'm scrolling down through. I'm scrolling back up. I'm scrolling down through. Back up, back up, down through. I'm not looking. And boom. Okay. It looks like Becky... B-E-K-I Henslin, H-E-N-S-L-I-N. Becky Henslin, H-E-N-S-L-I-N. Becky, if you're on the show, um, would you send me an email at rudoodles.com? I'm going to send you this little birdie and with an original birdie, and then you get to keep him for a month, and then you got to send him to someone else with a little original bird painting. I love the idea of doing this, even if I thought of it myself brilliant okay so uh it's just kind of a fun way to be a community so come on help out all right here we go so there's a little bluebird he's gonna come to you uh he looks like a wren but he's a bluebird today okay in fact i might go down and paint one of carol's blue today just as in the plant i like his little blue head right there can you see what i'm doing oh my gosh watercolor will it stay on no you're not gonna leave him out in the cold weather anyway you're gonna put him up on the shelf and uh you might want to repaint him some other color when you get him. All right, there he is right there. There is the bird. Can you see him? Cool. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Not overpainted. Even left a little clear up here. Might just touch that just a little bit if I quit dropping my brush. Hey, fun to paint with you guys today. I appreciate you guys uh, being patient and waiting on me today and being part of the show. Love it very much. Thank you for the community. Uh, take your last sip of tea today and think about two people right now. One, two. Okay, send them both a text. Send them both a text. Tell them Rue says, hey. All right? Okay, I'm out of here. Uh-oh, Becky, B-E-K-I Henslin. Send me an email. I think that was the name. Um, <laughs> I can do mud puddles. <laughs> coffee in the room mug. Chip's having coffee in a room mug this morning. Yeah, Chip, paint out your coffee cup. Last little, little paint. Okay. Um, hey, I'm going to post uh, the paintings I did this morning. Uh, the uh, Rube Goldberg one is here. Uh, it's uh, espresso blend. And then I'll come up with a caption for this one, or I won't. I just may send it out like it is and let you caption it. Wow, I like this painting. You see how the hard edges drew in here with all the holidays? And then I painted this little bluebird today. Thank you for being a part of the show. Uh, I will do this. Um, I will do my best to um, try and answer any questions you have on the show. Today I answered two, Y57, Rue, and quit being afraid of watercolor, okay? Uh, so, 
And uh, Val Braun, yes, you said your favorite watercolor is made with honey. I think that's great. It takes it a little longer to dry. And bees love your paintings. Just kidding. All right, I'm out of here like a herd of turtles. It's been fun. Wait, I got to set this up so it will dry. Uh, oh, 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 here we go, right here. Oh, perfect. There's a little piece of foam on my desk, and I just stuck that little wire in there. It's fantastic. It's going to work great. I found my harmonica, and I'm out of here. Uh, and if you want to know how much cream is in a Dunkin' in a Krispy Kreme donut, go in and ask them one day. Just say, hey, how much cream is in there? Shh, let me see you blow one up. I'll see you tomorrow morning, 8.57, if my internet's working.